So here's a little quick video on how to do um, number 50 part B. I received a couple of questions about it and so I thought I would make a video about how to do this because the issue comes in with the cleaning up of the of the arithmetic that's there. And so just to do something that's probably already been done on your account, we know S and T are both in quadrant 2. So if I focus on angle S, let's just make sure that we all are okay with the numbers that I'm going to be cho choosing. So the problem really wasn't with A in both cases. So this is S and it says the cosine s is negative one-fifth so that's negative one is the opposite I'm sorry the adjacent and the hypotenuse is five we need to know what this y is and we saw when we solve for y by saying y squared plus negative one squared is equal to five squared we quickly get that y is equal to two root six and so two root six is a replacement now in here for y and be, now that we know that that's 2 root 6, we can get any trig angle. Angle S, I'm sorry, angle T in this case, right? Angle T was also a second quadrant angle. Its sine was 3 opposite over hypotenuse. We know that this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So we know right away that that's negative 4. So again, I always put the, the appropriate sign on it so that I never have to um, think about signs um, of trig functions. It just naturally comes out. So the question in part B is the tangent of S plus T, which is by definition or by um, by identity, tangent of s, I'm sorry, plus tangent of t all over 1 minus tan s, tan t. And so we just plug in tangent of s, we can see that right above. It's opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be negative 2 root 6. Right? So if I take the opposite over the adjacent, the 2 root 6 over the negative 1. Over here, tangent of t is negative 3 fourths. And that's all over 1 minus these same two numbers. And so um, as we look at this guy, we want to realize that we got some cleanup to do. So the first thing that I would clean up is the complex fraction. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator of the big fraction by 4. That means 4 gets distributed in. So 4 goes and hits the first term and becomes a negative 8 root 6. And 4 comes and hits the next term and the 4's cancel out and so we get minus 3. On the bottom 4 goes and hits the 1 for 4. 4 goes in here and the 4's cancel out leaving us 3 times 2. Oh, I apologize, both of these are negative. It's negative 3 fourths times negative 2 6. So we still will keep our minus and a negative 2 times a negative 3 is a positive 6 root 6 and the 4's again are canceling. So let me make sure you see that appropriately. 2 root 6 over 1 times 3 over 4 that's negative times 4 over 1. So the 4's are canceling. The negative 2 times a negative 3 is, is positive 6 but that positive 6 is still after this initial subtraction sign. So that's what we bring ourselves down to. You absolutely cannot leave your answer like that because of the square root that's in the bottom. And so your mind should reflect back onto Algebra 2 where we cleaned up this kind of thing because they knew you were going to see it if you chose a major that was math science related. So I'm just taking a moment to copy that. We'd love for that to be the answer, but unfortunately we have a square root in the bottom. So what do we do? We have to multiply the bottom by something to get rid of the square root. Well, you know what that's going to be, the conjugate. There's no way to just simply multiply by root 6 because it would have to distribute through and you'd just be changing who has the problem. So that's why they spent a lot of time in Algebra 2 um, going over the, um, the conjugate nature of it. So on the bottom, we come here and go back to blue. On the bottom, we know what we get. 4 times 4, 16 minus, always minus, 6 times 6, 36, root 6 times root 6 is 6. And so we have that big number that's there on the bottom. And on the top, what do we get? Well, we get a bunch of stuff. We get negative 8 times 4, which is negative 32 root 6. Right, so I'll just distribute this through. 
we get a negative 8 times 6, which is negative um, 48. And then root 6 times itself is times 6. And that's, you know, we run a 3 through, we get a negative 12. And we get a negative 18 root 6 out of that. So let's combine the like terms up top. A negative 32 root 6 and a negative 18 root 6 is negative 50 root 6. 48 times 6, I figured that out already, that's 288, but negative. So a negative 288 and a negative 12 work together for negative 300. On the bottom, 16 minus 36 times 6 is actually working out to be negative 200. So notice that everything is negative. They're going to pull that out. They're going to essentially factor out the negative ones and cancel them. So I'm going to change this to 50 root 6 plus 300 divided by 200, right? Because you have a negative divided by a negative, so that's going to be positive. Everybody's positive. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to pull out the common factor of 50 and get root 6 plus 6 all divided by 100, which matches that answer.